Good morning, everyone. It feels like the lights are brighter than they were last service. What ifs? Don't turn them off, though, because then you won't be able to see me. That's a joke. That was a joke. Um, so as I tell every new group of people that I speak, that I have the privilege of speaking to, um, I need your feedback. I ask questions that are not rhetorical, and most of the time the answer is yes. So I just need a head nod, just let me know we're on the same page, um, so I know I'm not, not listening to Jesus. So, everybody got it? Nice, Perf. perfect. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, Tyler spoke about God, our Father. He dove into the Lord's Prayer, and if you're like me, he did the first verse of the prayer, and then he's like, all right, let's pray. And I was like, no, what about the rest, you know? But during that sermon, he talked about God as our Father, and he flipped the script on the prayer from just a prayer that we should pray, but rather it's a prayer from a child to a father. Father to child, child to father. So with that in mind, let's talk a little bit about relationship as we go into the next part of that prayer. So we all have relationships, correct? Nice. So we all have relationships, um, everybody. You at least got one friend, maybe, I don't know. But everybody has at least one relationship. So. Of all the relationships that we have, let's take the most important relationship. Everybody got a visual of their most important relationship? For me, it's my wife. And for you, I hope it is someone else that is not my wife. Hope so. But this particular relationship that everybody has in mind, we all know and understand that there are things that I do in this relationship to sacrifice how I feel or what I want for the sake of my wife, to show her how much I love her, to make sure that she is happy, and to show her how much I value her. Those are the reasons that I sacrifice things in my relationship for my wife. So in all of these relationships that we do have, obviously the greater the intimacy the further I am willing to go in the relationship. Make sense? Cool. So for example, God sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. Really big, really huge example. God said, I value humanity this much. I'm going to give up my son for you. And then on the opposite side of that, on the smallest level, I don't know how many of you guys know Pruitt Hicks. She is the best, number one, but she's four and she loves everything sugar. Almost every week she comes to me, she's like, I got a donut. I'm like, well, you eat that donut, you know, go ahead. A couple weeks ago, we were at the Ashcraft's house for lunch on Easter and all the kids have their eggs. And Pruitt comes into the living room and she's like handing out candy to the kids. And I was like, whoa, what's happening here? Because Pruitt's giving away her candy. And Jenny goes, Pruitt, why are you giving your candy away? And she said, because I want them to be my friends. And I'll go, oh my gosh, a four-year-old understands sacrificing the things that I want for the sake of this relationship. All the way from God to a four-year-old. So now that we are all on the same page and we understand sacrificing, that leads us to Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the simplest terms, this means you first, God, me second. We could end the sermon there, but today I have more than two minutes to speak, so we're going to take full advantage of it. So we've established this relationship, and because I understand that God is the greatest thing that has ever happened to me, because I know and understand who he is, Naturally, all I want is what he wants. 
I want God to be happy. I want God to know that I love him. I want God to know that I value him in this relationship. So I am willing to do certain things. And if I go, I am asking God, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We first have to look at heaven and see what the kingdom is like before we can know what it looks like here on earth. So number one, continual worship of our Father. Revelation chapter 4, verses 6 through 11. And before the throne are four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind. Kind of like a mom, you know. I see it. Eyes in front and behind. The first living creature, like a lion. The second living, living creature, like an ox. The third living creature, with the face of a man. And the fourth living creature, like an eagle in flight. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes and all around and within. And day and night, they never cease to say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne saying, worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they existed, they existed and were created. So first thing that's happening in the kingdom of God, there is continual praise and worship. All day, you got these four ridiculously looking intense creatures that never stop saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Tyler said a couple weeks ago, just speaking to who God is, that's all they're doing. And then you got these 24 guys who are sitting on their own thrones. They're like, oh, they said it again. They jump down off their thrones and cast their crowns. Worthy are you, Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power. And there's this cycle that's happening over and over and over and over again, every minute of the day, continual praise and worship unto God. Next, Jesus has full authority. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 says, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That verse right there says, this is why there is power in the name of Jesus. This is why the, dem the demons tremble, because all authority has been given to Jesus. I liken it to a mom in the house. The younger sibling comes in, mom said, hurry up and get up so he can go. The older sibling doesn't get up because the little kid said it. They get up because two words, mom said. That's why when I come and say mom said, oh, all authority has been given to mom in living room, bedroom, bathroom, you know what I'm saying? Kitchen. All authority has been given to mom in this house. And that's what Jesus has, all authority in heaven and on earth. Also, we are citizens of heaven. Philippians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21 but our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him to even subject all things to himself. I, Rafer Arthur Owens Jr., am a citizen of heaven. First and foremost, before anything else, I belong to heaven. And we'll talk about Jesus and the authority and our citizenship. But before I'm anything else, I am belonging to heaven, first and foremost. And then sacrificial love. 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love 
Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. God sent for our benefit, not his. My notes I had, hashtag wow. He sent for our benefit, not his. So all of these things are happening in heaven. Continual worship, Jesus having full authority, our citizenship belonging to heaven, and sacrificial love. Okay, so I got it, Rafer. All those things. Oh, that's tight. All those things. How does this play out in my life, though? Like, every day, how do I make this work? Am I supposed to go to Burger King, get a crown, and every time I'm like, oh, Jesus is awesome. Oh, yeah, God, you know? Am I supposed to do that? If you'd like to, go ahead. I think it'd be awesome. I'd put it on Instagram if I saw you do it. But we don't necessarily have to take our crowns every day, a physical crown, and toss it. But there are ways that it does play out in our life. So when we say, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, kingdom is a twofold answer. First, inside of me, internally. I am literally asking Jesus every day to be king of my life in my heart to reign over me. I am saying, Jesus, because my citizenship is in heaven and you have all authority in heaven and on earth, let's take that heaven, put it down to earth. I bow my heart to you in continual worship. I give my life to what you would want me to do today. And for today and for tomorrow, that is my prayer. And then on Monday, I wake up and I go, Jesus, reign in my life and in my heart today and tomorrow. And then on Tuesday, Jesus, reign in my life, in my heart today and tomorrow. That is the kingdom inside of me. That is what it looks like on earth. I'm not doing the deeds. I'm not doing the things because it says don't do the deeds or do the deeds or whatever. I do it because God is just, he loves me so much. The least I can do is love him back. The least I can do is just give him control of my life. Bow myself to his kingdom. And then externally, to see the gospel spread everywhere. Think about America on the 4th of July. Second best holiday in the year, right? I at home have American flag sunglasses, polo, oh, we'll get to the polo. I got a tank, got some socks, like shirts, a tall hat. Got this polo, the old man polo with the like constitution on it and the eagle and a flag on this side, you know? I go, that's America on the 4th of July, why? Because we belong to America. We letting off fireworks, ah, oh, 4th of July, America, you know? We do all the things. Last year we were in Mexico, Jenny and I, on 4th of July, and they know how America does 4th of July. So they did 4th of July like America does 4th of July. I was like, this is awesome. America. But I go, could you imagine if we legitimately just thought every day, I belong to heaven. And because there are creatures that are constantly worshiping God, because there are elders who are tossing crowns at the feet of God, that sounds like it's always a party going on. Sounds like it's always the 4th of July in heaven. So I need to get my old man Jesus polo, spiritually speaking, and put it on and rock it every day. You know what I'm saying? I belong to heaven, man. And if I belong to heaven, I'm going to show people I belong to heaven. Because we do that and we're all Americans. America! Well, yeah, I know. I know you are American because we're here together. But could you imagine what we would see in our churches, in our communities, if we just changed our mindset of, I am of heaven, 
You know what I'm saying? Yes? Okay. And further than that, to see the kingdom on earth, if something happens in Lee and Sarah's life that God does, my mind goes, hey, God, your kingdom is coming in their lives. That's encouragement to me. You did it for them, God. I know you're going to do it for me. You have to because you love them as much as you love me. So you have to. Can you imagine with your friends, God is doing things now? Just making stuff happen in people's lives. The encouragement that comes from that. God, I am seeing your kingdom on earth. Thank you. That's so good, man. So then the next question is, well, what is his will? What does his will look like on earth? If sacrificial love is the will of God in heaven, then what is it on earth? It's the exact same thing. To walk in love. Unconditional, true, honest, uninhibited, sacrificial love. All for the sake of my relationship. We talked about, the, we talked about it earlier. There are, things that I, there are things I am willing to do. I sacrifice things for this relationship that I have with my wife. No questions asked. Love. Walk in love. John 13, verses 34 and 35 say, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. People should see the unconditional, true, uninhibited, sacrificial love that we have for each other. And because we have that love for each other, people should want the love that we have for each other. You know what I'm saying? But we sit and we go, I got an attitude because they did this, and so I'm going to walk past them at church. Come on, man. At church? That's like sitting at a family reunion and you're not talking to your family. Come on. And then we wonder why churches aren't growing. Then we wonder why, oh man, there's a decline in the church. Come on, because we aren't loving each other. Because I got a bone to pick with you. And my bone to pick with you is bigger than the love that Jesus wants me to share with you. The world just doesn't want Jesus. No, they don't want the Jesus that we're showing them. Love. This is how they will know you are my disciples. To the point where they go, I need that in my life. You ever be around a group of people and you're like, I just don't like the way that they operate. I would rather not be friends with them. But I go, what am I doing to change that? What am I showing that they go, I need that? Or am I just a part of the, I don't want to be friends with them because love. Everything that I do, everything that I say that I think should be in love. My motive in every single situation to, should be to love. In his book, John, The Light and Life of Jesus, Adam Hamilton wrote, the whole of Christian ethics comes down to one question. What is the most loving thing I can do? Whenever you're trying to decide the right thing to do, you will never go wrong asking, what's the most loving thing that I can do? That is with your children, that is with your spouse, with your friends, your coworkers, everybody that you meet. What is the most loving thing I can do? No, my guy friends may not need me to give them a hug and a kiss every time something's wrong. That may not be the most loving thing I can do for them. For my wife, different story. What is the most loving thing I can do? Sometimes it's not saying anything. Sometimes it's just being there. Sometimes it's just a short text. Hey, I was reading this scripture. Here it is. It's always different, but you can't go wrong asking, what's the most loving thing I can do? James chapter 2, verse 17 says, So also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. And that word word faith means firm persuasion. 
And the word works means an action springing from faith. So because I have this relationship with God, because I know that he loves me, because I know how much he cares, I am firmly persuaded. And because I am firmly persuaded that he is who he is, guess what comes out of me naturally? Love. The works automatically come, they spring out of me. Simply because I am firmly persuaded in who God is. It didn't say, go do all the things because God likes when you do all the things. No, it says, just be firmly persuaded that God is who he is. Everything else will happen for you. John 13, verse 17. Jesus said, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Happy and satisfied is what that word means. Not like, oh, you know what? I'm loving people and Jesus is just hooking me up with everything that I've ever wanted. No, 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 no. Happy and satisfied. We spend time chasing and doing, but we're not living sacrificial love. We're not just taking the time to do something well-intentioned in love, but we're doing all the things And we can do all the things. And until you stop doing the things and focus on Jesus and let him do the things, you will not be satisfied. Living in relationship with our Father, this is the one thing that matters every single day. Everything else will fall in place just based on the fact that everything here is working well. So when we take all of this, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I like to put my own words into prayers because it just makes me feel a little more like, like the relationship is the relationship, you know? Kirk Franklin calls God pops. He always says pops. I'm like, dang, that's a good relationship there, you know? I was like, God, (laughs) you know? But I go, God, you are my father. You are holy. And I pray you allow me to see you as holy always. Thank you for accepting me as your child. Just as heaven is continually praising you, please allow me to continually praise and worship you in everything that I do today. Help me to walk in love with you and with Jesus that I can live in your love and further give your love because I have so much of it. Let me hear and feel the Holy Spirit as he helps me to walk in love with everyone that I meet today. It's not a bunch of crazy words. It's not a bunch of hoopla. It's just, God, I need you today. Help me today. Keep me focused on who you are today. Let me walk in love. Let everything that I do be in sacrificial love, just like you did for me. That's what this relationship, and specifically the line of this prayer, is about. Move me out of the way. Move me out of the way. I don't, what I want, what I need, what I think I need, let me move that out of the way so that I just want to please you because I value you, God. And I guarantee you, man, nothing will make you happier or more satisfied than living your life with Jesus. And I say with Jesus because for Jesus has us focusing on what to do. Live life with Jesus. That's the essence of your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Those that are gonna serve communion, you can come forward, please. God gave the greatest act of love expressed when he sent Jesus. And because of that, we always take the time to commemorate what Jesus did by partaking in the Lord's Supper. 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 31, it says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. You guys can go ahead. When I do communion with the worship team, I take them back to that relationship that we talked, in, talked about in the beginning. Take that one person that you love so much and give them to be sacrificed. Just give them. And imagine what you would feel when it came time to commemorate that person that you gave, when it came time to commemorate their sacrifice, how would you feel if people took it lightly? How would you feel if people didn't even want it? How would you feel if people came unworthy or unclean to commemorate what you gave? I go, I know for me, if I had the power, there'd be a lot of people that'd be sick and there'd be some people that would die. So as this song is played, I know normally we take it all together, but as this song is played, number one, if you do not have a relationship with Jesus, ask him during this song to come into your heart and to reign over you here on earth as he does in heaven. And if you've already accepted Jesus, do a legitimate heart check. This isn't a question of salvation. It's about the relationship. Are we good here, God? And if we're not, I apologize for these things, but I do love you and I know you love me and I thank you for what you have done for me. So as this song is played, please pray, partake as you see fit. If you want to stand and worship, go ahead. But the floor is yours to do whatever you need to do with Jesus. Let's pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for loving us so much that you gave everything that you had for the simple sake of relationship. God, I pray that you allow the Holy Spirit to move across this room in the name of Jesus, that hearts are turned to you, hearts are open to hear you and to feel you. God, I pray that you have your way today in this room we love you so much. We give you all praise, glory, and honor. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.